Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Uh, today we're going to talk about some of the smoking, more smoking gun research in regards to putting even more nails into the Clovis first model of the peopling of the Americas and also expanding upon what was, I guess now is no longer theor- theoretical. Now there's we have some hard evidence in the record of Denisovan and Neanderthal and Australasian ancestry in, in not only extant people in the form of the C- Sirui tribe in uh, Amazonia, but also in individuals 1,500 years ago having this uh, Denisovan slash Australasian marker. If you've read uh, Graham Hancock's book, um, America Before, in chapters three, in part three and four of that book, he mentions this theory at the time theory and in his other uh, interviews he's him uh, alongside um, some other independent researchers have alluded to this fact as well Um, people in the mainstream have been careful not to uh, say this for uh, quote-unquote academic reasons but now this is great because the official adults in the room so to speak can actually speak freely on the subject now which is uh hugely hugely important anyways this article came out of gizmodo of all places this is all based on uh, research that has been published in the proceedings of the royal society it centers on these two archaeological sites in brazil uh which reveals the genetic ancestry of the continent's early humans so uh let's stop bearing bearing the lead here uh, the research examined remains from Brazil, Panama, and Uruguay, which revealed uh, migration patterns of the early South Americans across the continent, which ran north to south. So let's uh, pull up the map here. So they came uh, north to south down into the Americas, which people knew, right? Like the Ice Free Corridor, the bridge, the land bridge between uh, uh, in Beringia between Russia and Alaska. People knew that for a long time, but there are also migrations in the opposite opposite direction on, along the Atlantic that ran south to north. So people were going both ways. So that is now in the academic record, which is a big deal. Even though people were talking about this for a long time, speculating about it a long time, um, it's now become official. So again, this is also pub- published in the Proceedings of the Royal Society B. There's an interesting quote from... Uh, the, the head author of the study, Andrew Luis Campello dos Santos, and he says uh, the presence of these ancestries are explained by episodes of interbreeding between anatomically modern humans and Denisovan uh, Neanderthals that should have occurred before the first human groups enter the Americas through Beringia. He is proposing that this admixture happened and then they migrated down without really getting into too much detail he's kind of eliminating the idea that straight denny sovens came in here and then admixed here he's saying that the admixture must have already happened before the migrations so with these genomes found in uh the remains from uh individuals in brazil panama and uruguay um, they were uh, compared to remains from uh, alaska u.s peru and chile so Basically, in North America, individuals in North America, North and Eastern South America, were compared to people in more of the Eastern part of uh, South America here. So Brazil, Uruguay, and Panama. So very interesting. Uh, they're t- uh, Geographically speaking, it's not too far, but they are on different the two different coasts here. They also uh, examined two ancient whole genomes from teeth in northeast Brazil. So again, we're on this side here. Uh, they were sequenced, which were only a thousand years old. These individuals. So um, the team looked at uh, the present day genomes and DNA sequences taken from Denisovan and Neanderthal remains from Russia, which are 40,000 years old. So again, these, the, the, one, the specimens in America are tens of thousands of years younger than these, quote, source um, gene, 
genomes that originated 40,000 years ago, right around the time the Neanderthals uh, disappeared from the fossil record. So here's some uh, results here. Uh, the chunks of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA in ancient South American genomes were found and uh, australation signals from individual in Panama. So that's about as far north as they thought Australasian signals would go because they still haven't found any Australasian signal in North America. So it's very interesting that only the people down here had the Australasian signal. So uh, Graham uh, alluded to that in many interviews, as well as um, other researchers. And they were just laughed out of the room because they, a lot of the established uh, science didn't support that at the time. They thought it was just hearsay and nonsense, which is really unfortunate because it just slows down the whole process. Because this stuff should have been um, official a long time ago, or at least investigated further a long time ago. So uh, that Australasian signal was previously detected in remains from southeast Brazil and present today in the Sidui people from Amazonia, uh, which, which constitutes a large, a large part of uh, South America along the Amazon River. So that's not a coincidence, right? So we, so we have Australasian signals as far north as Panama here that connects the two uh, continents. Another result that they found was Denisovan ancestry mixed into South Americans as long as 40,000 years ago, which and the signal still persisted in the remains of these individuals, uh, more specifically this individual in uh, Uruguay, uh, which again is on the other side of the continent, but still, that's a long time. That means that the initial people from 40,000 years ago who, however they got here, they took boats or across uh, the, the South Pacific, which we'll get into a little bit more later, or if they just hiked in from the north. Either way, um, they, in order for that signal to stay in an individual after th tens of thousands of years, means that they must have survived. They didn't scrape by by the skin of their teeth, so to speak. They must have been thriving for a while to where their populations would have been big enough to kind of support this this downward drip of their dna through time to for us in the present day to find them uh here's another quote the extra amount of denisovan ancestry in some populations seem to fit with extra ancestry from papuans new guinea and in that sense, data is consistent. And this is from Lawrence Skov, a researcher from Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany, and what, uh, who was not affiliated with the study, but is just giving their two cents. Um, in other words, the, an the ancestry from, these, from Papua New Guinea here are way across the Pacific. Their excess, so to speak, of Denisovan ancestry is comparable to people that, that they that they found with the same ancestry in the data that they found. So basically what that means is it's highly possible that these two people um, within a short amount of time spread their genetics from from the what as far west as Australia all the way east to South America. So these people must have had boats. They had uh, um, access to um, to uh, their great seafaring civilization. So the next step is to figure out exactly when this Australasian ancestry component appears in America. Um, and in order to do that, they're just going to have to keep uh, studying and looking out for these uh, new, uh, the present day and uh, soon to be discovered um, specimens that they find throughout the two continents. So individuals in Panama and Brazil had more Denisovan ancestral signals in their genomes than they did Neanderthal specific ancestry, which is interesting because modern humans have more Neanderthal than Denisovan. So we're talking about really remote tribes here back in the day that still to that persists now in extant people, people who are still alive, the Sidui people they they've known that they've had this these extant people had this signal but they just didn't know what to, what to make of it you know 
And Graham was one of, among the first people to say, well, what about um, their seafaring cap capabilities? Because they knew that Polynesians had seafaring capability for sure. So they're going to examine more Native American, more po uh, present day Polynesian genomes and really see uh, what kind of high resolution uh, pattern or image or snapshot of history, if you want to call it that exactly when and where uh, this happened because now it, it sh it's no longer debatable that this happened the admixtures there there must have been some sort of uh interbreeding or or a con contact um for lack of a better word encounters in which you know the admixture happened uh, the australasian ancestry in the americas is perplexing this has been reported for isolated samples widely separated by space and time and doesn't show a clear pattern. That's uh, Joseph Lazaridis from uh, Harvard University. Such ancestry may, may have spread with Austronesian migrations across the Pacific, a non bringing route as Austronesians were able seafarers. So there you go. Um, if you guys have any comments about this, let me know. If you guys have read this from a different uh, source let me know um it's it's this is a uh, really exciting stuff and um i'm sure more will come uh more discoveries will will come trickling through now that this kind of kicks open the door for all these other uh, uh wide-eyed um researchers to kind of dig in